Now, you may not know this about me, but I have fairly strong opinions on score counters in video games. Well, I mean, I didn't until I started making this video, but you know what? Making a video like this is a very good way to give yourself strong opinions on score counters, even if you didn't before. Now, since I don't really care about how the score counter is going to be triggered in each of these examples that I'm going to go through, uh, I'm going to be using the same system for every design. I'm going to be using this little square, you should see on the screen, to shoot the other little square, and every shot that connects will trigger a score uh, event. It'll give the player a few points, it'll change. Uh, this obviously isn't what things would be like in a real game, but I'm just trying to look at each score counter in as close to a vacuum as I can get at least in a medium as interconnected and complicated as a video game. So with that in mind, let's discuss 10 different score counters that I decided to come up with for some reason because, hey, why not? Counter number one, the standard counter. Now this is the easiest and most basic counter I could possibly come up with. All it does is what a counter is meant to do. It does the bare minimum and nothing more. All that happens when I shoot the enemy is that the number goes up unceremoniously. Now, I would not recommend using this kind of score counter in a final product. I mean, it's good for prototypes, but hey, it's your game. Maybe you know better than me. Counter number two, the standard counter with score notifications. Now, yes, because I am a huge nerd, I created my own terminology for this video. What you should be seeing at the moment is that each time I shoot the enemy, a little pop-up will appear near the score counter that shows how much score we're actually adding each time. Now this is really good in situations where you're adding a variable amount of score, so you want the player to be able to, you know, they don't have to do the math to understand how many points they're earning each time. However, I think we can do better than just this. This can cause more confusion than clarity sometimes if I have a lot of them running at once. So this brings me on to counter number three. Standard counter with stacking score notifications. Again, this one is very similar to the last one, but this time each score notification will stack onto each other, providing the player with information about how much score they earn over a certain period of time. Now, I personally love this kind of score counter in video games. It creates its own kind of mini challenge, uh, it, like you want to keep up that stack before it defaults to zero and everything, but it doesn't look very cool, the number just goes up. If only there was a way to make this stand out a little better. Counter number four, standard counter with expanding stacking score notifications. Okay, I know this one might be a little obscure, and really I could have grouped it into number three, but, you know, it's a neat concept. So, this is basically the same concept as the last one, except a score notification gets slightly bigger based on how much score the player has managed to rack up in a short space of time. Now this one is really fun to play with since it adds to the pressure that the player feels when they're desperately trying to prevent the score notification from timing out and resetting back to zero. Just the fact that it expands makes it feel more like a reward somehow, I'm not entirely sure how, but just trust me, it does, okay? Counter number five. Standard counter with entity-focused expanding stacking score notifications. Okay, yes, I know, the naming convention is a bit much, but don't worry, the next one will be shorter. So this entity focus bit, which I mentioned, uh, this refers to the fact that these score notifications will only show up around the entity that is triggering the score gain. Now in our case, this is the enemy that I'm shooting at. Uh, for clarity's sake, I've also added another enemy at the other side of the screen that I can shoot to show you that we can have multiple score notifications appear at different parts of the screen, it's not just localised to one area. Counter number six, the counting counter. So. Back to basics, let's get rid of score notifications for now, although you could easily combine basically any uh, type of score notification with any type of counter, really. All that the counting part means is that when we add score to this score counter, instead of just updating to the new value, it'll quickly count upwards as if we're gradually pouring the score, or gradually pouring the points into a metaphorical bucket that's on a scale, if you think about it that way. Uh, now this is pretty fun, but it may not fit every use case. Uh, for instance, you probably don't want your counter to just be constantly counting upwards. That could get really visually confusing for the player, who just wants to work out how many points they have. However, if your score events are somewhat spaced out, just enough to allow the counter to count up and level out every now and then, it can prolong the feeling of reward that the player gets for earning some points. I mean, it doesn't work if they're just, you know, earning points constantly. But, uh, yeah. Counter number seven, shaking counting counter. That's right, you didn't think I'd actually go this whole video without making something shake, did you? You fool. 
you small, small man, or woman, or non-binary an. Um, this counter will shake momentarily after some points get added, while it still has the same counting behavior that the last one did. Now this one is good, but it is highly dependent on the duration of each effect. The shaking component or the counting component can be different durations, and this will severely change the outcome. So I'm going to break this down into 7A and 7B. Counter 7A, long shaking, short counting counter. Now this is not one that I would personally recommend you use. I don't know why, maybe it's just my personal opinion, I'm totally open to that. But I can't think of a single good use case for it. The shaking just sort of heavily obscures the counting, so it's like it's not counting at all. I mean, maybe it could add to the sense of chaos or disruption if you want to go for that vibe. But while it also limits the duration of the reward feeling, it makes the whole counting aspect of the counter kind of moot in my opinion. Now if you can actually figure out a good use for this, please let me know in the comments because I really don't want to have this be the only counter which I just can find no good value for. Counter 7B, the short shaking long counting counter. Now this is the one that I'd recommend if you want to use counter number 7. Even if your counter normally has other behavior, it might be worth specifically adding this behavior just as a one-off, just on like, you know, if a boss gets destroyed and it disappears into a big flash of light, for instance. Now, the reason that I say this is fit for a boss encounter is just because the shaking fit will only last a short while. Now, this still gives the player that sense of entropy and disruption or chaos or whatever you want to call it, but the extended counting will prolong that feeling of reward. Now this stacks very well with the player's natural feeling of reward for defeating a boss. I mean, if you think about what's actually happening uh, when you, you know, say the player has finished a boss encounter, you're basically telling them they have fundamentally changed the game world that their player character is inhabiting. Now even if the game isn't very story-based, they're still getting this sensation of uh, being very influential over this environment. And that's the kind of reward that you need to amplify by allowing a score counter to reflect this, uh, you know, big change, this, you know, big achievement. I mean, a score counter is only, it only reflects achievement. Counter number eight, the semi-permanent counting counter. Now, this score counter will only ever show up if the player has earned some points. It'll play the animation, or it'll do whatever it needs to do, and then it'll just turn invisible again. Uh, now this one is best used for counters which could potentially add to the visual clutter or if you want to go for a really minimalistic look and you're trying to keep the UI as tidy as possible, you might only want to have to show the score counter when you absolutely need to. I left the counting trait in since the counter needs to do something to justify it appearing sometimes. I mean, I would probably not implement this kind of counter without another trait to supplement it, otherwise it would just kind of appear as a new value, which sort of cheats the player of seeing that value go up and reflecting their accomplishments, it's giving them the uh, feeling of achievement. Counter number 9, a non-numerical counter. Now this kind of counter is the sort of thing you'd see in a game like Super Crazy Guitar Maniac Deluxe 3, which is the first one that came to my head, it's an old flash rhythm game. Uh, which would give you a score from poor to perfect, I think, on each song. It also had a non-numerical component to the, uh, the combo counter, which is not something I'm even going to get into in this video. I mean, most of what I can say about score notifications is also applicable to combo counters. I mean, it's still a notification which pertains to your score. Uh, this counter is also not particularly great for high-scoring games, at least in my opinion. I mean, once you get to whatever word you put at the top, there's no way to really show further accomplishments. Now this kind of counter could be used as supplemental to other forms of score counter, like it was in Super Crazy Guitar Maniac Deluxe 3. Uh, however, I think the best use for this score counter is for things which are dependent on time. Just being able to sit at perfect for 10 minutes while accomplishing nothing is not a great look for your game. But if you go down one level every 10 seconds unless you accomplish something, it gives the player the sense they have something to stay on top of, and more importantly, it makes each deviation mean something. Counter number 10. The semi-permanent shaking counting counter with entity-focused expanding stacking shaking non-numerical score notifications. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to put this one in because, come on, how could I resist just putting all this stuff into the same score system in one huge, weird clusterfuck of features? Now, I know anybody following my YouTube channel will probably know that I just like ridiculous things, and this isn't actually as ridiculous as I was hoping it would be. So, in addition to that, I'm just going to put all the numbers up and make everything really big, and maybe that'll satisfy me. 
Yep, that sounds about right, and now I am satisfied, I can end the video. So if you want to see more content like this, you gotta subscribe, and if you want other people to see more content like this, then press the like button, maybe leave a comment, I don't know, do engagement stuff. If you want to support me for any of my work, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description, any contributions to which I am eternally thankful for. I mean, think about it, if I didn't have Patreon money coming in, would I really be making a video about score counters? For like 10 minutes? You know what? Maybe don't pledge to me on Patreon. I think it might be a bad idea. It might be bad for me. It might be bad for the internet. This isn't the universe psychology. I don't think you should do it.